this lecture, we're going to compare two different general categories of research designs, large N and small N research designs. And so far we've been focusing really in this class on large N designs, um, and yet we'll see that small N designs are very common in political science, and um, ultimately they actually share quite different underlying assumptions about what research is um, and how to go about assessing causal inference. So in this lecture, I'm going to review those different approaches to causal inference. So what are large N and small N research designs? What does it mean when I say that? Well, first of all, a large N design uh, is one in which the researcher is comparing lots of cases, uh, an N of larger than 25 of a certain phenomenon. And here you want to have the more cases, the better, right? Um, so you want your sample size to be as large as we possibly can have it. For a small end study, you're saying, no, let's just look at one or a couple of cases and focus on these cases in great detail. Um, so you're not looking to have many, many cases, which inherently means that you're not going to get to know any of those cases quite as well. Instead, you're going to really pick apart um, one or just a handful of cases. So let's talk about one of some of the reasons why you would use a large N or a small N design and the different assumptions that go in them. Um, so there are several criteria, there are four criteria that I'm going to lay out here of different types of assumptions and beliefs about the world that we see in large N and small N designs. So the first one is whether the researcher is focused more on the independent variable or whether the researcher is focused more on the dependent variable. So what this means is for a large end study, the researcher is really more interested in looking at the independent variable, meaning the question they ask is, what is the effect of x on y? Really, and the, the point there is to say, what is the effect of x? Um, versus a small end study, the researcher will be more concerned with the dependent variable. That will be what motivates the puzzle, saying, what is the cause of y? So to, to explain this difference, let's go through um, some examples. Here we think about the judiciary. Okay, so on the left we see uh, Merrick Garland with his daughters, and you could have a study that looks at the effect of having daughters um, on a judge's ruling. And here you're not going to want to look at just Merrick Garland. You're going to want to look at lots of judges to see what are the general trends. So here you want to look at that effect of having daughters on many, many um, the cases and see how it affects uh, ruling in a feminist way. Compare that kind of question with one where you are looking at uh, a particular judicial decision. So maybe you're looking um, at changes over time in how the Supreme Court has cited on gay rights rulings. Um, and so why have they struck down DOMA recently? Um, why have they decided to accept um, gay marriage as something that is going to be the law of the land? And so here you would look at a couple of cases and look in very close detail at those cases um, because your interest is why do you have this outcome of accepting the gay marriage case? Um, and you're not going to necessarily want to look at lots and lots of different cases. You want to hone in on that to really analyze how you have this outcome for this particular kind of case. A second difference that we see is whether the, the interest is really in generalization. So overall, we do want to generalize with any kind of political science study. We are looking um, at a system of plastic controls, not a system of clouds. Um, so we are looking for overall models. But the question is, how broad, how universal are these models that we're trying to develop? Are we trying to find a, a model of human voting behavior that's going to apply in every context, or are we trying to narrow our scope a little bit more than that? So with large end studies, they tend to focus more on maximizing generalization as much as they possibly can, versus with small end studies, you want to look maybe at a little bit more narrow of a scope. You're trying to generalize to some degree, but say rather than focusing on um, voting behavior in all countries, maybe you want to be looking at voting behavior just in the United States. Thinking about an example here, you could have um, a discussion about the causes of war. And so you might be looking to see, well, what are overall the causes of war? Or you could be looking at a particular moment in time and say, um, during the Cold War, when did uh, conflicts actually spark violent outbreaks? And so here you're going to have um, uh, an explanation that may not apply to, say, the War of 1812. 
and that's okay. You've limited the universe of your cases you're trying to explain it to. So that's more common with small end studies than it is with large end studies. Third, and this is one of the biggest ones, uh, the question of how do you treat outliers? So are outliers part of just that error term um, that you're going to have some noise in your regression? Um, not everything is going to fit on the regression line, but the, really the interesting story is the regression line. And that's what we see with large end studies. You're not as interested in the outliers as you are with the general trend. Compare that with small end studies where outliers are interesting. They're surprising. That's what we're going to focus on more. So thinking here um, about democratization in the late 1980s, um, we see that most countries that were former communist countries uh, have democratized, except China. China, we have pictures here from the Tiananmen Square protests on the left-hand side are the, the students that were in Tiananmen Square, and here is the tank man who stood down um, the tanks at the end of the protests that were brutally repressed, leaving China still in charge and with an authoritarian regime. So is this just noise? Is this Chinese case um, you know, an exception? Or is this something that you're going to just focus on why democratization failed in China? You're only going to have this one case maybe if you did that study, um, but it would be itself interesting if you're a small end person. If you're a large end person, you wanna look at overall, why do some countries democratize? Um, and so what are the effects of say economic shocks on democratization? You're looking at that more broad trend rather than a specific outlier. And finally, there are different types of observations that we'll use for causal inference. So here are two terms that we use. Um, and this is essentially comes down to the question of what kinds of evidence do we draw on um, and how do we understand this evidence? So what, what pieces of information, what pieces of evidence would we use to assess causality? With large end studies, we have what are called data set observations. Okay, so these are, these are observations that can fit into, say, an Excel data set. And with this, you would have all of your different cases, and you have many cases, remember? Large n, that's what large n means, lots of cases. Um, and you have um, lots of different, um, you have a number of different variables, and your data set is going to contain all of your different scores for each case on, that, uh, on all of those variables. So you have the dependent variable, you have the independent variable, you have the intervening variable, and you're able to capture it all in a data set. So compare that um, with what are called causal process observations. And so looking at the, the term itself, causal process observation, these are pieces of evidence that are focused on the causal process or the causal mechanism itself. It's not an Excel data sheet. Um, it may just be for one case, but you're really focusing in on that specific cause of process and trying to come up with evidence for it. So here we can see if we had um, some sort of study that looked at uh, congressional committee behavior to see how a um, certain kind of issue gets on the agenda and reaches the floor. Well, you're gonna wanna look across lots of different committees and you're gonna come up with a data set that looks at different kinds of conditions um, in terms of the power of different groups, the um, fundraising uh, profiles of different members of committees. Um, you're gonna look at lots of different patterns um, here and you would have a data set that um, includes all that information in it. And that would be the way that you would explain how certain issues get on the policy agenda. Compare that to somebody who is doing a study of why um, the Civil Rights Act is able to be passed. Uh, so here, they're not coming up with a large data set that has lots of different cases in it and, and traces that out. No, they're going to focus on this specific process of passing the Civil Rights Act. They're going to want to say, well, in order for this to um, be accomplished, it meant that LBJ, we see here signing the Civil Rights Act, um, had to exert pressure on these kinds of Southern Democrats. Um, and so in order to do that, you want to look, well, what it, kinds of evidence is there that LBJ exerted um, pressure on the Southern Democrats? Uh, you might look and find that there are logs of LBJ visiting their offices. You might have transcripts of meetings. Um, you might see some sort of uh, backing where he's stumping on behalf of those members of Congress. 
um, in order to ensure that they are rewarded for their support. So these are the types of evidence that you would look for. You'd look for evidence of that causal process actually happening. Um, and then you would look to see, well, are those members of Congress that were influenced, do they actually vote? Maybe you would do interviews with them and ask them how important was it that LBJ um, backed this. You maybe would say, would you have signed this otherwise? And see what they say. So the point here is that you're not looking for lots of different um, uh, evidence on lots of different cases. You're looking for evidence that's specifically for this causal process and teasing out as many steps, as many little intervening variables, as many different points of data that you can find in order to assess that causal process.